Hello there. You're very welcome to today's BA Technical Arts for Theatre and Performance online course webinar. My name is James Carey. I'm going to be here um, a little bit at the beginning and again at the end. Um, and I'll be taking care of the Q&A towards the end as well. Um, I work in the student recruitment marketing team and my, my, aim, my work here is kind of coordinating the event and just making sure you have all the information you need. Um, so we'll get to Q&A towards the end. There's a functionality on your screen for that. Um, all your microphones are muted and your webcams are turned off as well. So you need to worry about being seen or heard throughout the session. So in a moment, I'm going to introduce you to the course leader, Simon, and a student on the course called Rose. Um, but for the first slide or two, I'm just going to talk a tiny bit about Wimbledon and um, University of the Arts London. So Technical Arts for Theatre and Performance is one of several courses in the design program in Wimbledon. And we also have a program which focuses on an act acting and performance as well. And that's part of a wider university, which has six colleges, London College of uh, Communication, which is at Elephant Castle, London College of Fashion, which is now in Stratford. Uh, they had several campuses which have all moved to Stratford. Uh, Central St. Martins, which is the King's Cross. Um, and then there's Camberwell, Chelsea and Wimbledon, which are based in each of the, the name, the clues in the name as to where they're based. Uh, those three colleges roughly work together as kind of sister colleges, uh, but they're quite separate. And Wimbledon is uh, focused entirely on performance and performance design. Um, UAL for the past five years running has been in the top two universities in the world for art and design. That's based on the QS subject rankings. Um, it's also fifth, I believe, in the green universities for UK. And there's multiple things like this to do with setting up businesses and so forth, being freelancers, that kind of thing. At many points, we are quite high up in these um, league tables, we'll call them. Uh, once you join UAL, you're obviously part of a course, then the college, and then a wider university. Um, and that ultimately is a, a network of 20,000 creative students uh, at any given time. Um, the staff that teach you are specialist practicing staff. They're practicing in their, in their professional field. Um, and the course leader can tell you a bit more about that. And also about the industry links and progression into your career, chosen career based on this specialism uh, when you finish the course. Um, and I was just chatting with the roles beforehand as well, talking about different placements that take place as well. So you should hopefully get a lot of information around this as the open day progresses. So I'm going to hand over now to Simon and Rose, if you could both, both introduce yourselves, please. Hi, I'm Simon Stringer, course leader for Technical Arts for Theatre and Performance. Hello, I'm Rose. I'm currently a student for Tech Arts um, at Wimbledon UAL. So why would you want to come and do our course at Wimbledon? It teaches you all of the skills you need to produce life-size props, animatronics and prosthetics. You will learn modeling from life and how to scale things up. Animatronics will be explored both electrically and mechanically. General fabrication skills will be taught so that students are familiar with all aspects of making in a modern prop making studio. And you will learn to produce character sculpts to a professional level. Now, this is the first project which we've just finished this year with the students. The task is to, first of all, draw your ear, take a light cast of your ear at life size, and then you start scaling it up. So these ears are all three times bigger, and I get a three times bigger ear done by measurement, and I get a three times bigger ear done by eye measurement. So we have to compare and contrast and make sure they're exactly right. But it's a good, fun introductory unit, and everyone loves it. This is life casting the ear, where we cut an old coffee cup in half, put it over the ear, try and protect the student with a bit of cling film, bit of cotton wool inside, and then we pour in alginate. And then when that sets, we then pour in some wax and we get a cast of it. This is moving on to the next unit, which we are working with at the moment, uh, which is animatronics. This is a very uh, piece which was done a few years ago by Britt Walker, where she did an imagined shop of a sort of um, it, sort of things you could buy, like you could buy yourself a new pair of hands or, you know, like a sort of plastic surgery gone mad. So this is a hand that you could sew onto your hand and she had a mechanical insert inside it. So this thing was on the shop uh, counter, as it were, just breathing and moving away which is very interesting, required four servos, and you'll get taught how to control all of these mechanisms, which is what we're doing right now. This is the big unit of the year, which is unit four. 
which is a uh, fantasy fabrication. And really what we're looking for is any kind of fabrication or sculpt that you can make, which would come from the world of computer games. So if you have a magic pair of boots that can help you run fast, or if you win a task and you become a samurai warrior and you put this outfit on and then you can fight at a stronger level than you did before. And the whole idea is to teach you all sorts of fabrication skills. And you can see this uh, samurai piece made by Holly. She got so into these samurai outfits that she made one for a final sculpt in year three too. But all of that leather work is embossed and gold leafed and the setting she made for it all is just fantastic. This is another piece which was also done at the same time from the same year. And all of these pieces were made under lockdown because of COVID. So they started their sculpts in the studio and then they had to take them home and finish them. This is a two headed ax and it has beautiful sculpts on both sides. And Jane learned how to take molds off this and how to invert the mold and get it to work on both sides and then joined the whole thing together. That was a beautiful sculpt. After the unit four fantasy accessory, we move on to the last um, task of the year, which is to create an exact copy. So it can go into production. This is an exact measured copy of a character, what we call a licensed character. So we do a series of turnaround drawings first, which are on the left, where we can see the figure through every angle. And then you sit down with a wonderful substance called monster clay, which you heat up in a microwave or with a hairdryer, and you model yourself an exact small copy of those figures. People have done Scrooge McDuff. They've done all the characters from Monster Inc. They've done everything. One of I think the next slide, James, is uh, I begged the student not to do it, Rob, but he wanted to do it. It's Carnage from I can't remember what you know from the, the game Carnage, but it's a figure with all of the. Um, it's a mummy, mummified figure with all of the bandages coming off. But my God, that was difficult, but he did it and it just looks fantastic. It was a perfect sculpt. This is another one, Emily took home this, I can't remember the name of this character, but um, beautiful. Rose, do you know the name of that character? No, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, it's from some uh, modern cartoon film and uh, beautifully sculpted. I love the glasses and I love the little figure and to keep it all under perfect control like that is beautiful. And there's another one by Emily, beautiful. So what we do in the start of the second year is we start prosthetics. We are taught by a wonderful industry professional called Stuart Bray and Stuart Bray's CV starts with Shaun of the Dead. That was his first film. And as I said to him, that's enough for me, Stuart, you've got the job because that's one of my all time favorite films. And he's worked on so many films since then, lots of TV work, aging, doing all sorts of things that Prosthetic is um, working with. This year we did a slightly changed thing where we called it Altered Surfaces, which people could interpret any way they wanted on the face. A lot of people chose to do an aging or a wound and uh, obviously that is involves taking a life cast, casting out another thing, making yourself a hard copy, modeling the, on the changes in monster clay, and then taking a further mold. So there's an awful lot of mold making and casting in this unit. And you get to cast in a kind of addition cure rubber called Platzel or Silskin, which is a clear rubber that you can add colors to. So learning how to color rubber so that it exactly matches the face is a great skill to have. And that's what they did. If you can show us some examples from this year. These have just been finished. This is Lucy's piece. She modeled a whole in sort of intense brow and strange um, teeth on the whole thing. Beautiful sculpt, very good color match. This one was fantastic. That just the grain across the face. At first when I saw her modeling, I thought, oh God, that mold's gonna be too difficult, but she did it, even though it had the drop in behind the eyes. That's a piece based by The Last of Us, uh, a sort of mushroom changed face and very difficult to do because of the weight of the prosthetic, but very successful and got it to work. And once again, very good color match. That's another fantastic one. And then we move on after prosthetics to the collaborative unit and the collaborative unit is different every year. This is what the student, students chose to do then. They chose to tell a whole lot of tales with acting students and with costume students and the tech arts department made these beautiful big puppets 
in uh, collaboration with Carl Robertshaw, who's the man that did the hatchling, which was one of the great sculptures which were paraded past the Queen at her Jubilee. And lots of our students were helping with that. So that was just a fantastic thing to see on TV. This year, we've chosen to do Godzilla. So we're going to be doing Godzilla, Mechid Godzilla and Mothra. And we're making big life-size suits. And one of the other projects is another um, project with the Polka Theatre, where they've been making a lot of beautiful little puppets to tell tales to children at the pol local Polka Theatre just up the road from us. And Geraldine runs it every year beautifully. This is Travelling Tales again, and these animals were just fantastic, all made from recyclable materials, all were turned back into rubbish at the end of it. These are just um, plastic bags that were just wrapped and sewn around a, an armature. Then we go on after the collab unit to, you have a choice. You can either do a sculptor head from life, or you can work on a miniature scale model. So half the class choose to do the modeling with a man called Jethro Crabb, who works at Madame Tussauds. He is absolutely brilliant. And he teaches the head sculpt to a very, very high level. You can see this is the first head ever made by Lena Sprood. And it is just fantastic. There's the model on the right, and there's the sculpted head on the left. And to be honest, I couldn't actually believe that a student for their first head could produce something that good. And it is just a matter of measuring and taking your time. And Jethro takes you through the Madame to Swords measurements where you have all these strict measurements which are taken from the head. And then he puts little dots all over the head so that you can measure that you have everything in the correct place. And uh, he achieves results like that, which are exceptional, frankly. There's another one, another very difficult head, Manon's. Manon now works at Pinewood, beautiful head. And then at the end of the year, we have what's traditionally called the paper project. And believe it or not, that typewriter is made of cardboard. And this lovely ghostly figure spun out of the top of this typewriter as if the typewriter had been possessed. This was two students collaborating. It was Elliot and Charlotte. Charlotte made the typewriter and Elliot made the lovely dancing figure. And uh, once again, an exceptional piece. This was another piece by Angela, I think for the same unit, she was reinterpreting The Tempest after she'd done her uh, portrait head and she had all the clouds and gathering storms of The Tempest and made them as a kind of collar piece, beautiful. These are some uh, collaborative, not collaborative pieces, these are some specialist pieces from the year before. The piece on the left is made by Mia Martin. That head, believe it or not, is actually made of toffee. So we felt it suited the big fat man so we cast it in toffee and then on the top of it, she squirted it with raspberry sauce and all of the bits and stuff coming out from the inside, they're just marshmallow tubes that we bought and marshmallow strings. And we just shoved them all up inside and dyed them red. And the wonderful thing about that piece is that when you got close to it, you could smell the toffee and the raspberry sauce and everybody was drawn to it straight away. Fantastic piece. And of course, Neve Mars, fantastic. Uh, one of the three witches heads from Macbeth with all of the hair made of feathers. And that was just such a fantastic piece as well. I think she modeled that in wax like they do at Madame Tussauds, a beautiful piece of work. Final projects, in the third year, you get to do what's called a research portfolio, which is what Rose is doing at the moment, where you will research any aspect of anything that you want to know a little bit more about. If you're a little bit unsure about mold making, in addition to rubber, you will do specialist projects in all sorts of areas and you will brush up on every single thing that you weren't so sure about from the other two years. So you get a kind of wrapping up chance. And then you move into the final project, which is to produce a life-size prop that exhibits all of the skills from modeling to casting to finishing, animatronics, prosthetics, everything you've learned over the years is exhibited in this final piece. And we get as many visiting people as we can get. We always get Sue Day, who is a Madame Tussauds manager, who comes in to teach hair punching, final finishing on the faces, and we pour in as much help as we can. I'm thinking of getting Peter Arnold in again this year, who's a set painter, so that he can show the students how to set their themes around their work. These are some of the examples of just brilliant pieces. This is Simon Martins. He, this was all done in lockdown, and it was done at the start of COVID. And to tell you a story, Simon Martin was a triage nurse. So he worked in the evenings in hospital, and he was involved in taking people to the morgue, 
So he had a really difficult job for a young person to do. But nevertheless, with all of that going on, he still managed to produce this at home, which is what he called a teacup dinosaur. Now he worked an entire story around this, where there was a company that would produce a dinosaur just for the Christmas holidays. So it was like a Christmas gift you gave your kid and this dinosaur came to life, but at the end of the holidays, it just faded away. So it sort of ran out of battery life. But whilst you had it for playing with over December, it's like the puppy you have just for Christmas. But it was such a clever idea. And he did an entire video that went with this advertising the fact the parents shouldn't worry, this dinosaur won't grow to a big size, won't eat your dog. As soon as it gets to a dangerous size, it'll just fade away naturally. But what a presentation he did. And Simon Martin left the college after that. And he sent me a, a fantastic Instagram from Pinewood Studios of a picture of him with Harrison Ford. And he said, I'm working on Indiana Jones 5, Simon. Thank you so much. I think I owe you a drink. And that was just the proudest moment of my life. Another piece by, <coughs> sorry, I'm getting too old and emotional. That's a piece by Emma Cole, another piece that was taken in lockdown. Her father very vanity came in and picked up that life-size figure in clay and thumped it on the back seat of his car and took it home. And then they stood it up at home and she finished the modeling. She took a mold and she cast it. Beautiful piece. That piece, another piece by Mia who did the toffee head. This was also done at home in a bedroom. And it was a sort of piece that uh, met sort of these wonderful things of using animals uh, with these wonderful sort of brushes that were all animal feet. And she had a, a mop that was made of squid that was for the floor. And then she had this beautiful figure. She made that whole figure. She made all of the wrinkles on the head. I think there's another picture of a close up, James. Next one. Oh no, uh, we must have missed it. But if you go back one, this head has got beautiful lines on the neck and aging and the hair punching and the eyes and the eyebrows and the hands. And inside that figure is really is just a couple of bits of wood and some sponge holding the whole thing up. But her mother was a headmistress at a local school and she managed to get into the school and she took these pictures uh, where she dressed up a figure in the cleaning outfit of the cleaning women because no one was at the school. And it just looks fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So those things were from the Flintstones, those strange things. Now, this is a final project of another brilliant student who worked during lockdown called Meg, Meg Hursthouse. Now, Meg was very cheeky. And towards the end of the year, she was becoming very distant. And I was worried because she was one of my best students. But she actually took a job at Channel 4 and started working with Channel 4 before she'd even finished. But because her work, Mr. Tumnus and Lucy, was so good, we just looked the other way, frankly. She handed in everything on time met all the requirements, but this entire set was made in her bedroom. It's all polystyrene. It's all lovely bits of birch trees. And those figures are about eight or nine inches tall and they're just finished superbly. She made all the outfits. Mr. Tumnus's trousers, you know, because it's a cross fawn fantasy figure, made all the lovely fur on that. And this is the piece that she did for her research portfolio. That's Eve Pilastri from Killing Eve. And she made Eve sitting in her bedroom and she made all of the different expressive faces. But so she had a wall of about 30, 35 different expressions that Eve could click on. And you could take from the board and click on to the figure and change the expression from yawning to talking to resting to shouting. And she modeled all these different expressions and she made that little trench coat. And that figure is about eight inches tall. And she made all of those books and they've got really funny titles where she was taking the mickey out of myself and Martin, the lead technician, about all the books we could have written about naughty students and things. It was just, just blew me away. Fantastic piece. That's the neck of Mia's piece. There's a close-up of the cleaning woman's face and there's the beautiful neck. Now to make a neck so beautiful and to cast it, and then this really is, it's superb at every level. The modeling's brilliant, the casting's brilliant, but the most brilliant thing is the coloring. Look at those lips. That could be a real person standing there. And that was all just modeled. The way that lips naturally fade away when you get old, fantastic. This was a piece by Amelia. She made a, she wanted to make fantasy weapons uh, from fantasy films and fantasy um, characters. So she made this beautiful tomb with a whole lot of weapons on top. 
that was another lockdown piece. But the environment around that of the old stone walls and the stained glass, superb. There's some of the wooden carved. She did wooden carved and she did EVA foam. So she made a variety of weapons in a variety of materials. That was the traveling uh, case by Celeste. That was a sort of suitcase of curiosities, like a sort of shaman or some kind of medicine man moving around with all these strange things. That is Daisy working on a figure. She made a kind of strange crossover animal figure, like a sort of um, Grinch, something like that with a strange nose. But for this one, it was all about the mold making and the modeling and the casting. Once again, she did a very difficult job of taking an addition cure rubber, which is called a ZA22 off this figure. You can see the rubber on the floor there. It's a 50-50 mix. And the next slide should show you there's the rubber having gone on. And we all learned a lot about addition cure rubber. If you don't get the keys on the top, which are those little lumps on quickly, they reject them. So when you open the mold up, the keys fall off. So we learned to put a bit of bandage in the back of those keys and rubber over. So that was a great learning curve for all of us. That's the figure being cast in a lifelike skin. And then she hair punched the face. She put lovely whiskers on it. She put some freckles on the face and she put lovely hands on it. It was beautiful. There it is. I mean, that is a very quizzical kind of expression. This was a figure who was at a doctor's waiting room, waiting to have his temperature taken or to have some kind of injection. So it was sitting there like a young child on an operating table, wondering what was going on. And that is just perfect face. And she had a whole pile of lollipops next to it to try and calm it down. That was Josie's piece. She did a life-size beautiful figure. Once again, very complicated addition cure rubber and a big platinum or silkskin cast out of it. That was a lovely fantasy creature by Izzy von Schmidt. And that was flocked and hair punched. So she had a whole, the sections of the face are flocked and then the whole back is just fur covered and hair punched, it took her ages. That's another one of her little creatures. She wanted to have a kind of fantasy pet shop at the end of the universe where you had all of these strange mixed up characters the ears are upside down, the face looks a bit odd. And this the idea behind it was that you could buy these strange animals from this pet shop. Uh, that was Rob Whitmarsh, the guy that did Carnage. This was his final piece and he made a suit of armor, but with this wonderful Delft kind of Wedgwood um, ceramic finish on it. So the, the strangest combination that you would ever find on a suit of armor is sort of Wedgwood ceramic things, which would be on your granny's teapot but he put them all over the suit of armor and that was a big life-size piece. And that was absolutely fascinating and beautifully made. And that finally is Charlotte's piece. Charlotte is fantastic. Um, that was a teenage vampire. And if, when you looked at the piece, the teeth kept dropping down and going back up and she made it in the sixties themed room. And she had all of the telephone directories and all of the records from the sixties. And that was a lovely sort of sixties dress, which she'd sewn herself from a simplicity pattern, which is what everyone used to do in the 60s. And it was just a fantastic piece. And she has gone on to work at a company called 13 Finger FX, which is a prosthetics company, which is where Rose got some summer work. Very fortunately, I was phoned by Dan Martin from 13 Finger. He wanted people to go there and help demolding molds and casting silicon suits. And it just, uh, Rose had finished the piece and it was brilliant. So I said, Rose, phone this man go and get some work experience. Rose, tell us what happened when you were there. Um, hello, so yeah, I started, I did about two weeks there while also doing a um, prosthetic unit, working a lot with silicon. So I learned a lot about silicon as a material, um, kind of working in industry, you start to learn a bit more about how the process works, especially with kind of prosthetics. It got me really interested in like the way that they make them. You start to really appreciate the process, the steps that are taken. And so, yes, yeah, so I went there, it's really amazing. They were all lovely people, instantly felt, you know, like I was learning part of the team, felt like I could ask questions and learn more. So yeah, it was a really, really good experience. And then he, uh, Dan Martin messaged me over summer, asking me to work over summer, which I was really amazed about because I thought with the um, strikes and everything that maybe there wouldn't be as much work this summer, but you know, I managed to get some work and ended up doing that for almost the whole summer, working on a uh, ser series coming out soon for Channel 4. 
and yeah that was really good as well I learned lots was given loads of kind of opportunity to be independent and kind of make my own things they were asking me kind of like what do you think how do you think we should do this so yeah it's just really good learning opportunities and I know some other people as well that were working over summer in industry and you just learn a lot and then coming back into third year you know you just have things that you kind of don't feel like you need to be refreshed with it so you're still carrying it on and it makes you really excited to kind of get started into it again in third year so yeah it's really good fantastic rose brilliant so i'll just finish the last slides before i hand over to rose to tell you about her journey through the course the next slide james is yeah these are the skills you'll learn model making prototype making prosthetics animatronics modeling from life to a very high standard character design mold making casting into a wide range of materials that's a lot of the work you'll be doing and creation of small scale set models now the careers, you can work across a wide range of industries. You can work making sculptures, you can work for film and TV, you can work in uh, museum fabrication. Some of our best students went to the b &A. Uh, Some of our students went to work at a, a big foundry in Bristol called the Pangolin Foundry where they're modeling enormous things and printing stuff. Um, special effects people, animatronics are always needed everywhere. And sculpture fabrication has become a real big industry People like Tracy Ammon need those big sculptures made and they need a lot of people. There's about 16 people working on each one of her big figures and most of them get trained in courses just like this. And of course, mold making is a transferable skill which you can take just about anywhere across our industry from TV all the way back to foundry work. And we're very, very fortunate in that we seem to get most of our students a job. So I obviously can't guarantee that. And it's always the most motivated students and the students who've worked the hardest. But if you've you worked hard and you've done all the things you need to do, you end up with a very good portfolio. And we've been very fortunate for the last four or five years, nearly all of our students have got jobs. The ones that don't get jobs are people who want to go off and travel around the world and do other things. But there's nothing more warming than there was a, a rap picture from 13 Finger FX last year and everyone sitting around the table with somebody that I had taught. So it was a great moment of pride for me and also proof that the department and the course is working. Yeah, we get a chance to do a work experience in the second year, which is what Rose did a little earlier than she should have, but she did it nevertheless. You also get a chance to take a year out and do the creative computing diploma, which is a separate year buffing up your computer skills. You can also take a, what's called the DPS year, which is run by our second year tutor, Geraldine, a Diploma in Professional Studies, where you will go and get yourself a job or a few jobs in various industry uh, things, and you can get specialist help and training, but work or practice from the actual professionals in the actual job. So that's how it works. I think you do three or four weeks in each placement, and then you get to write about what your experiences were. You can, of course, also do the study abroad tour and exchange, which is all the way over in Australia or New Zealand. And I think we still have some Erasmus links. And according to the government, they'll be uh, re-strengthening those links so that we can continue to study in Europe, which is where most people want to study. Now, when it comes to the collaborative unit, we collaborate as we're doing at the moment with the Godzilla program with costume students, theatre design students, um, technical arts students. I'm trying to think of the last one. Rose, can you think who the other students are collaborating on that? It's costume. It's there's just about everybody. Everybody who's on this campus, which is all about performance. We all get to come together, acting students, of course, because they're going to be the people inside the costumes. And uh, that's what we do. And externally, we'll be collaborating, hopefully, with the Japanese embassy, who will help us exhibit these Godzillas as it's part of their cultural heritage. We are looking for a personal statement and a portfolio. Now, a lot of people look at these uh, webinars that we do, and don't forget, we're showing the best work that has been produced for these years. The standard is attained by just about all the students, so I'm actually spoiled for choice. I could have chosen just about anybody's portrait head and just about anybody's prosthetic work and just about anyone's unit four or final sculpt. But what you've got to understand is that we teach from day one. You don't need to be perfectly up to all of your skills when you get here. I'm not expecting finished life drawings or finished sculpting of any kind. What I'm looking for is an interest in what we teach. 
So if you're interested in what we teach, what I find is that that passion will feed you through the course and you will learn as you go. So when it comes to your portfolio, I don't mind what you put in it. I would like to see some drawings you've done, things of interest that you've worked with, uh, perhaps costumes you've made when you were cosplaying and you went to Comic-Con, things like that. That's what I'm interested in. And those are the things I want to see, but please don't be in any way intimidated thinking, I'm expecting a professionally produced portfolio. I'm not, I'm expecting a day one portfolio. And what I want from your personal statement is, I want to be on your course. I'm passionate about it and I'm ready to learn. That's how you get a place on this course. Handing over to you now, Rose, take us through your journey. Hello. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk a bit about what my journey of Tech Arts has been and the different projects that I've done um, here in the last two years, um, now in my third year. So, yeah, as Simon was saying, you start with the ear project, which is a really fun way to kind of get into kind of how you learn a lot about how, what happens on the course. You learn about the kind of basic structure of like mold making and going from sculpting to then molding and then casting which is really amazing live casting as well um it's just a really fun way to kind of get into kind of sculpting and also to i don't know it's very it's quite like a wholesome way to start um the course so yeah that was really enjoying enjoyable you kind of like scale up an ear um model it and then there's also an opportunity to do um, like uh, some lips and a nose if you have time after as well, which is really cool. So yeah, that's a really nice kind of start. I really enjoyed it. Um, and then unit two was animatronics. Um, you're, we were taught by someone called Giles Walker. We were helped um, a lot by an industry professional and he's really amazing. Uh, he knows a lot about animatronics. Um, you kind of start to learn the basics, uh, servos, and Arduino boards so it's kind of it's really interesting to learn about you have the opportunity to do like a little bit of coding as well um but yeah it's really cool to kind of like bring together movement and making in a way that's works really well so yeah that, that's kind of like the basics of that unit um there's a few videos that I have of just a little bit of the kind of like experimentations that I did this is one that we did with the um 3D lab by Will, who focuses a lot on movement, and, and so yeah, so he we kind of were taught how to make movement with without using um, technology first, and then we went into learning about how to kind of code and create movement with um, servos and Arduino boards. So this is another video of me kind of experimenting with how I was going to make my tail work. I made like a a little pillow with a um, tail underneath it that moved so it kind of looked like there was something hiding underneath the pillow and it was kind of moving inside the pillow as well so that was my kind of like final piece for that uh, project um unit four was life-size fantasy accessory i really enjoyed this project you kind of have the opportunity opportunity to have quite a lot of creative freedom over it um you kind of base it you kind of have the opportunity to make any kind of fantasy accessory based on like a game. Um, I made a pair of kind of goggles inspired by steampunk and kind of like retro sci-fi films. I really liked doing it. I, you know, I learned a lot about sculpting and mold making and using kind of milliput. And also I wanted to use some kind of like recycled objects as well. So I kind of found bits and pieces in a skit and put them together and, um, different nuts and bolts and things like that so I really yeah I find it a really enjoyable thing and then you also make the set for your piece so I made a kind of like a almost like a black hole and a kind of like silvery brick background to go with it and that was really you know that was kind of really fun as well to have the opportunity to put your piece within a set and then it gives you a bit more experience as well for third year when you're making your final piece you also need to put that within a set so that's really good to kind of learn about um and it was also the first time that I had done a head sculpt. So it was the first time that I'd ever kind of like sculpted a head. I wouldn't say I'm particularly proud of it, but it was a really good learning curve on how to kind of start doing that. Um, and then unit five was character sculpts. This is the one that everyone really likes. I think everyone really enjoys this um, unit because you kind of have the opportunity to create your favorite character. Uh, I did one of the aliens from The Simpsons and 
yeah, it's using Monster Clay. I think it was the first time that I had used Monster Clay actually in this year. And it's a really lovely material to work with. You'll kind of end up working with it quite a lot in this course. Um, but yeah, you kind of produce a um, 225 mil model using Monster Clay. It's really helpful for if you want to go into character design or if you want to start making toys, anything like that. It's really, really cool way to kind of start doing it. And yeah, learning about kind of how to sculpt things that are a bit more kind of fine tuned and exact, but then often people do fantasy characters. So it's kind of like a mixture of both, which is really nice. Um, and then the prosthetic project, which is when I started doing a bit of work with 13 Fingers. This was one of my favorite projects, I think, because of that, it kind of really got me into it. Um, live casting is really fun. You have the opportunity to live cast someone's face and then um, using that, you sculpt on top of it to create a prosthetic that you then cast and mold. So it mold and cast to end up making a prosthetic. I really like this, this, um, unit I think it was really helpful for me personally in my journey of kind of what I want to do in the future and I learned a lot about kind of like skin tech how to sculpt skin texture this was my final piece for this project I kind of made like an old aging prosthetic and then I put some wounds in it as well it's kind of like the idea of kind of being a, maybe like a granny with a few cuts on her as well um so yeah I was quite quite proud of my skin uh, match uh, color matching on this and yeah, I still got the prosthetic actually in my house. So <laughs> um, the collaboration project. So everyone kind of does a different one with this. You can, you have the opportunity to choose. I really wanted to do some sculpting and kind of like further my knowledge of that. So I decided to do the um, collaboration with the Strand Hotel, Strand Palace Hotel, uh, which is kind of like an art deco inspired hotel in the Strands in London. And we worked with costume student, uh, students to make mannequins and tutus that um would go in their lobby and they would be just uh, ex exhibited there for i think in the end they were exhibited there for quite a long time it was like three months or four months they were there for which is really cool so i could like bring my family to go and see them and you have the opportunity to kind of work with an industry that will kind of uh, you're working to a brief because you have to like keep on checking in with the hotel to make sure that they it's what they want because it's going to be displayed for them so it's kind of like a, it was very professional but it was really amazing to kind of work with other students at the university that were doing different courses as well and talking to them. You meet other kind of like um, course leaders too, which is really handy. So you kind of end up forming relationships with them. So yeah, it's a really, it's a really lovely course uh, unit of this course to do. Here's some of the final images of mine. I ended up doing two. There were a few of us that had to do two. Um, and yeah, it was just like, classic sculpting it my making a mold of it uh casting it in jesmonite which is a material that will also be used quite a lot um on this course it's a really lovely material to work with and then yeah painting it and exhibiting it it was quite fun to uh, kind of paint with jesmonite i hadn't done much painting on top of jesmonite before but that was also a really kind of cool thing to kind of start doing using an airbrush everything like that was really fun um this as well is one of my favorite units. Like you can kind of see that I'm quite enjoying sculpting at this point. And so this is the portraiture sculpt that I think is one of the longest units that's been running the longest time on this course. Um, and it's really kind of like strips back everything. You are kind of put in a room with a model and it's you're with a guy called Jethro. He's really amazing. And you just are really taught like the basic skills and the kind of necessary skills on how to sculpt a head and also a skull. We did like a small half size skull as well to kind of understand bone structure um, before sculpting the head. It's a really good opportunity to just make something that you can kind of, you just learn so much on this unit on how to sculpt things and how to render things with clay, use all the tools, use calipers. You, there's so much opportunity here to Kind of make something and then once you uh, are finished with your head sculpt you make a cast of it uh, make a mold of it make a cast and then you um make a kind of like a, you transform it into a character that you like from we were given the opportunity to do othello so we made uh different versions of the characters from othello using the head that we had made so that was really cool as well to kind of 
take it from being very kind of traditional techniques to then applying it in a different way and creating a character from Othello was really cool. And um, yeah, these are some close ups. So here's like one of the ears and then the skin texture and the wrinkles, you kind of learn how to create wrinkles. You obviously this is the original kind of ear project in year one, and then coming onto year two and you kind of are like, oh, I know how to sculpt an ear. So there's really, you know, there's a process to it, which is really fun to kind of learn different ways of doing things and you can take it with you throughout your whole three years. Um, and yeah, this is my, so, Simon so talking about like portfolio and what my UCAS application to get in. I went to a foundation before at Met in Brighton and I did a kind of three dimensional pathway. So I hadn't really done that much sculpting or related things, but I was really interested in learning more about it. I kind of, here's kind of like some sets that I was thinking about creating. And um, so yeah, this was the kind of stuff that I did at my art foundation. It just like designs and different masks. I got into really making masks. And I think that that was partly why I kind of wanted to join the course as well. That kind of idea of kind of distorting human form and creating kind of body adornments, which is some, sometimes what people do on this course. So yeah, these are just some designs for that. And then life drawing. I think it's really handy to have in your portfolio, like some drawing skills. And if you can draw from life or like have done any life drawing before, it's a really handy thing to show that you are able to do um within your work and i think that that's all of my slides thank you and then, so yeah i don't know if it's going for james now or simon but yeah that's my journey in third year it comes back to me i think sorry i'm doing too much at once here we are Thank you, Rose and Simon. Um, I always get into the presentation so much, I forget I'm up next. Um, so I'm just having, I think it's about five slides I'm adding here. And these are kind of stepping away from the college and the course and just looking at the services that apply across UAL. So regardless of what course you study in UAL, these services are available to you. Um, and the first thing we focus on is the library. So the library services is quite a, a broad offer in the sense that you have a library based in Wimbledon. But there's also libraries at each of the other five colleges and you can your 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 ID will allow you access to those if you choose to go and visit them. Uh, they might be closer to where you live, perhaps something like that. But also you can get books uh, ordered from those libraries uh, to Wimbledon. And a lot of this, these kind of resources are available online as well. So you can order them online. Uh, there's also librarians in Wimbledon that are specialist in the different um, course areas that we have at Wimbledon as well. Uh, and they can help you with your research. Um, other things I'd want to highlight are the LinkedIn training, LinkedIn learning. It's about 13,000 free video based, um, the kind of tutorial based uh, so, um, tutorials. Um, and they have a whole range of different activities, not related specifically to tech arts, but in general to do with uh, various softwares, creative practices, business skills, technologies, that kind of thing. Um, and also from the point of view of research, Box of Broadcast is available to you with your university email address. And this allows you to access recordings going way back. I think it's as far back as the 80s, 90s of anything recorded in terrestrial TV, which could be quite handy for research. And it's all free of charge. Um, and I skipped over the UAL archives and special collections. These are based in different hubs across uh, each of the sites in UAL. Um, and it might be that you would be interested in those, for example, the Standard Kubrick Archive is based in London College of Communication, it's physically based there, um, and you can access that as a member of the public, but as being a, being a student, you could uh, request access to perhaps investigate the collection a bit further, and maybe it becomes part of what it is you, that you want to study and, and explore for your course. All the colleges have a central loan store and you may use this a lot or not so much, but it is really good to know that it's available. It's a collection of um, different equipment like laptops with software on them that you might need, data projectors, TVs, SLR cameras, lighting, various recording equipment. And that's available for all the courses at Wimbledon and you can just um, order those and use them as you need. So specifically on your course or perhaps for other activities relating to collaborations across the course as well. 
and it's a bit early probably for this, but just to flag, there is a career and employability department in UAL, and they run a whole load of, on, of activities from mentoring, one-to-one -one advice, uh, they do various workshops, um, often to do with freelancing, for example, um, and things like that. And you can get access to this department for as of five years after you graduate. Um, and you'll also have access to the alumni department when you graduate as well. Um, and then the last thing I want to highlight in this regard is student services. So if for some reason you would like to discuss um, perhaps dyslexia and you'd like to know how we support you on the course with dyslexia, you can start that conversation before you apply. You can you can have that conversation with student services if you go onto their web pages on the university website. Um, you could fill in um, a very a short form with some basic information and ask whatever question you have, and they can let you know how these things work in UAL. And if you have specific needs relating to a disability that you'd like to discuss, then we recommend you do that early, not leaving it to, to the day that you enroll. It's best that you discuss those and we can put things in place if needs be in advance. Um, and they also, that this, these services also include academic support, counselling, health advice, chaplaincy service, and disability, disability service as well. They're based centrally in the Holman offices, but there are staff that are in each of the college sites as well. And then the last thing I'll flag is the Students' Union. So they also give help and advice. They have Made in Arts London. They run various missions of work um, for students. Um, there's a whole range of societies and sports clubs as well, which you can get involved in if any of those are, in, or are of interest to you. I know quite a few people in Wimbledon join the Life Drawing uh, Society, for example. So that's it really for the slides. We're going to move to the Q&A section now. Um, and just to kind of to summarise, I suppose, definitely go to the course webpage to get an overview of the course. Read the application advice section. There'll be some criteria that are listed that you should focus on when you uh, fill in your personal statement and your portfolio as well. There's specific advice there. Um, and if you would like to come and meet Simon and Rose in person and myself, we'll all be in Wimbledon on the 18th of November to Saturday. Um, and that's specifically focusing on opening up the whole college so that you can get a tour of the college. Um, see those spaces that Simon have described uh, and find out more about the course. Um, we'll also have campus tours if that date doesn't work. They happen every term, generally on a Wednesday, and they're all bookable on the Open Days section of the website. Um, and in case we haven't said it, uh, applications are through UCAS, and you, do, and you can link through to that directly from the course webpage. So that's it. We're in the Q&A section now. So 